Hi guys, and welcome to The Colorful Gardener. My name is Josh, and today I'll be showing you how to create an island bed just like this. But before I do that, here are some great reasons to include an island bed in your front lawn. The first great reason to have an island bed is to add more color and interest into your front garden. Behind me, I have my herbaceous border, which is loads of, co which is loads of color throughout the year. With an island bed, I can add even more color and interest into my front garden. Number two, island beds reduce the mowing time you have to do in your front lawn. Number three, if you decide to put flowers in your island bed, you create a habitat for pollinators. Make sure you choose a time of the year that's mild and cool for you to create your new island bed. For me, whenever I make a new garden bed, I like to do it in April or March. Take the time to draw out your island bed on a sheet of paper so you are happy in the way it looks. Once you have your island bed drawn out, use a garden hose, sand, or brightly colored spray paint to mark out your island bed in your front lawn. For me, I chose a garden hose and to use spray paint. Now that I have my line drawn out, I can start edging out the bed. This might take a while. Now behind me was a tree. It was a pear tree and it was dying. So I had to cut it down. And I'm going to fill this back up with grass. And what I'm gonna do is take this grass here and move it over here. You are now beginning to see your island bed take shape. Now that I have my flower island bed edged out, I like to start on the smallest side first and work my way down. And the easiest way to take the turf out for me is to create small, long rectangle shapes and just use my shovel and go underneath it and just take the turf and slide my shovel underneath it. comes right out. Just like that. Now it's time to add the soil amendments. If you have heavy clay like I do, dolomitic lime is great for improving soil structure. It also helps raise the soil pH, which helps your plants better take up nutrients in the soil. Dolomitic lime is also a great fertilizer for giving your plants calcium and magnesium. So I am covered in lime right now, but that's all right. It's a dirty day. Um, I knew what I was getting into when I started this project. And this next soil additive is a really great one. It's called Permatil. And what it is, 
It's hardened rocks that are incorporated into your soil to allow aeration, water to drain through the soil, and doesn't let the soil compact, and also discourages voles from getting into your garden beds. Now, I do not have voles in my garden, but if I ever did, this would be a great way to deter them. This, this product is also called Vole Block, and it's actually kind of hard to find, shockingly. Um, I'm excited about putting it in this Flower Island bed. So what I'm gonna do is just like the lime, I'm gonna evenly distribute it over the soil so I get nice coverage. Permatil is a rotary kiln, fire expanded slate particle that keeps your soil from becoming compacted. Permatil is a rock-like substance that does not add organic matter to your soil, but it does keep your plants more drought resistant and allows them to take up more water through the soil. Okay, now for the good stuff. What you want to incorporate with your native soil is compost. Compost is great for improving soil structure and it also helps soil retain moisture. It will also increase your microorganism life in the soil. You can either make your own compost or you can go get some from the store in bags. Uh, great compost is mushroom compost. What you're gonna do is just you're going to spread it evenly over your flower bed and get as much coverage over the soil as you can. Okay, so I didn't buy enough compost, but I have been working on my own and it's not completely finished. There's a little bit, there's some more big chunks in here, but you can see it is starting to break down. There's lots of little bugs in there breaking it down for me and uh, it's great to reuse the things you have. Now that all your ingredients are together, it's time to add the mulch. When you're looking for mulch, try to avoid hardwood mulch and dyed mulch. Try to go for a more natural, darker mulch to add to your new island bed. Mulch is great for retaining moisture and adding nutrients to the soil. Here's a great tip. Try not to use landscape fabric when you're making new garden beds. Most gardeners will put mulch on top of their landscape fabric, which will break down and turn into soil. Then weeds can live in that soil. So now, not only do you have weeds, but you have a, a substance that will not break down and prevents nutrients and water to get into your plants. It would be like if I was to put a fabric over my face and I could not breathe, nor could I drink, nor could I eat which is very harmful to your plants. So to save yourself time and money, do not buy landscape fabric and just live with the fact knowing you're gonna have weeds no matter what. Okay guys, I'm finished Flower Island bed and I'm very happy with it. 
it looks exactly how I imag imagined my head. Um, it's a really nice, large flower island bed, which allows me to put a lot of different plants in here. So I'm thinking about trees and cacti and cool alpine shrubs maybe. Well, maybe not alpine shrubs, maybe like cool evergreen shrubs to really spice up this landscape. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial on how to create an island bed, and I hope it encourages you to put one in your front lawn. Check back every week as I will be putting out more gardening videos on tips on how to improve your garden. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Josh, and this is The Colorful Gardener.